Now to officially start our meeting, Commissioner Batchelor, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First item on the agenda this morning is item B, approval of the regular session minutes of June 9, 9 2021. Board, we received them in advance. Are there any corrections or deletions? None. Hearing none, I'll call for a motion to approve. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Call the roll, please. Commissioner Painter? Yes. Commissioner Batchelor? Yes. Commissioner Corcoran? Yes. I guess we'll wait on the presentation item C at this point, moving on to public participation. Um, we've reached that section of our agenda. Is there anyone in the audience this morning that would like to address the board? Seeing none, we'll close public participation, move on to consent agenda. Board, we received the consent agenda in advance also. Are there any deletions or corrections this morning? None. Hearing none, could I have a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Call the roll, please. Commissioner Batchelor? Yes. Commissioner Painter? Yes. Commissioner Corcoran? Yes. Item F, non consent agenda starts on number eight. Wade Grabowski, good morning to you. Good morning, all. Thank you very much for having me here today. Thank you for coming. I'll put my spectacles on again. <laughs> Ten item number eight is a recommendation for myself, Wade Grabowski, Director of Facilities Management Department, with a concurrence of Mr. Thomas J. Igle, County Administrator, to award the bid for the 2021 security upgrade project in various county facilities pursuant to the plans and specifications to Perkins Carmack Construction, Meyer Drive, Milford, Ohio, for the lowest and best bid received on 51321 in the amount of $435,000, and to execute the contract relative thereto with said services to commence upon issuance of a written notice to proceed from the Claremont County Facilities Management Department and to be completed within 180 calendar days after the receipt of the signed contract and notice to proceed. Pursuant to and in compliance with terms and conditions specified therein and the award of bid and contingent upon the issuance and release of the purchase order required therefore. Board, you've heard the recommendation of Wade Grabowski, Director of Facilities Management Department. This is award the bid for 2021 security upgrade projects, and this is in the various county facilities to Perkins Carmack Construction Incorporate. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Uh, Wade, this was the one that we pulled back and rebid, is that correct? That is correct, sir. <clears throat> and how how was it as far as bids prior and the rebid, the rebid actually remained uh, pretty constant through everything, but either or, we are below the architect's estimate. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, call the roll, please. Commissioner Painter? Yes. Commissioner Batchelor? Yes. Commissioner Corcoran? Yes. Thank, Thank you, you, Wade. Moving on to um, additions to the agenda, item G. Are there any additions this morning to the agenda? Yeah, we do have one. Mr. Bickford will handle that. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Bickford. Good morning. Uh, the proposed add-on is for the designation of an interim dog warden for the county pursuant to Chapter 955 of the Higher Advice Code. Thank you, Board. This is a recommendation of Greg Bickford, Assistant County Administrator, to, um, to appoint an individual to serve as the interim dog warden. And this is in compliance with Section 95512 of the Higher Revised Code. Do I have a motion to approve? I'll make add the that motion. To the agenda first. Add it oh, to sorry. The Thank you. I have a motion to add it to the agenda first. I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Second. Call the roll, please. Commissioner Batchelor? Yes. Commissioner Painter? Yes. Commissioner Corcoran? Yes. Now we have a motion to approve. <laughs> yes, my rec it's my recommendation to resolve to ratify the appointment of Teresa Fox as the uh, to serve as the interim dog warden for Claremont County pursuant to section 955.12 the higher revised code for the administration of the statutory requirements of chapter 955 of the ORC entitled dogs relative to the housing feeding caring for destroying and disposing of unlicensed and stray dogs within Claremont County effective 616 which is Wednesday of this year or 
You've heard the recommendation to appoint Teresa Fox as the uh, interim do chief dog warden, effective 616 2021. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? <clears throat> Greg, I understand that we're out. We, we're actually out seeking a dog warden. That, that's correct. Yeah. Out. Yeah. Mr. Peterson um, did a great job getting the shelter up and running, but he's got uh, family members. Uh, that are in various professions, so he uh, unfortunately was un unable to continue with us. Uh, uh, Teresa Fox has uh, really gotten a hold of that shelter. She knows how to run it, um, so we will get through this period, and we're uh, actively looking for a new chief uh, warden as well as another deputy warden. Um, you know, when you got a, a an animal shelter, it's kind of a literally a different animal. Um, we have a lot of people who we've got some uh, college students who are working for us. Um, she had an opportunity to go back to get her graduate degree, so she's going to be moving on. So. A lot of good changes, but we've got a good base built out there and the shelter's running pretty well. I was at church Sunday and one of the parishioners that attends there caught me while I was going out and made a comment about how nice that dog shelter is. <clears throat> she's been a long-term volunteer there and she's also been a long-term donator good. to the uh, animal shelter. And she was um, very, very, you know, pleased of, of how it has turned out. So good, good job. And hats off to Wade, too, and his team that have done so much to help us get it back and, and looking properly and, and functioning the way it should have. Thank you, Wade. All right, do I, for the motion to approve, can you call the roll, please? Commissioner Painter? Yes. Commissioner Bachelor? Yes. Commissioner Corcoran? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Any other additions this morning to the agenda? No, ma'am. Okay. Now we're moving on to item H, which is our county staff elected officials discussions. We have Phil Pumphrey with us this morning with CTC. Thank you for coming in. Good morning, Madam Chairman, Commissioners. Um, uh, Tom asked me to give a short presentation. We have a um, new split designation letter from OKI. I have to re remind myself not to call it Oki, but. Okay. But um, there's a new split on the 307. So I did a, a PowerPoint, and this is the shortest PowerPoint I've ever done in my career. Well, that's good. <laughs> Tom told me I had two minutes. So the first page we have annual apportionments to our urbanized area. There's more than one transit provider in the area, so the money has to be split among the transit providers. It's a formula based based on population, population, density, bus revenue, vehicle miles. When the buses are operating in public, that is a revenue mile. There are some other criteria in different areas. Sometimes it's high intensity ridership is one of the formulas. I don't, wouldn't be able to get an answer if we have that here or not, but generally that's the, the split. And then the next page you have is a uh, CTC is in blue, along with um, SORTA, Metro in Cincinnati, uh, the Cincinnati streetcar. Transit Authority, Northern Kentucky, Butler County, and uh, WCTS. Uh, our 5307, which is operations funding, is 1,352,000. Our um, trade with SORTA would be $527,086. Our 5339, that's capital and preventive maintenance, is 146403 And then I put in there the CRISA, which stands for Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security. 2.8 million and then the American Recovery Plan or Act which is 5 million that's the latest appropriations from Congress and that's 8 million 828,000 um, the next part is I've got our total funding from the appropriation from Congress this year for CARES CRISA uh, which is the um, coronavirus it's a, it's a tongue full Coronavirus Response and Relief Supplemental Appropriation Act. You can see why we call it an acronym, the CRISA. Uh, CARES was 3.9 million. I mentioned the other two figures. We have 11.8 million. Um, it can be used primarily for operations, but also for maintenance and uh, capital projects. So that's kind of a brief overview of what we have. We have a, a designation split letter. We'll be bringing that back on Wednesday uh, because I have the OTP2 grant for 2022. Uh, in the hopper, so we'll be back for that. Hopefully, to have you sign that as well. How much is that for? Uh, one hundred ninety-six thousand and one hundred fifty-three dollars, I believe. It's one hundred ninety-six. I know. I just can't remember the last three. Great. 
and that can be used as match with the federal money. So. Any questions, board? None. Hearing none, thank you very much, Mr. Humphrey, and we will see you Wednesday, I guess. Back. Appreciate thank you. Thank you. Back. Going back Thanks on. Thanks for coming. Thank you. thank you. Going back on our agenda right now. Um, let's go back to presentations. We have Ohio Treasurer Robert Sprague with us this morning. Good morning, sir. Podium yours. Well, thank you very much for making time for me this morning. I greatly appreciate it. Commissioner Painter, great to see you. Uh, and uh, glad to give you a brief update from the treasurer's office. Just like uh, at the county level, the state finances seem to be doing quite well. We've ended the year, or we anticipate ending the year, about $1.2 billion ahead of our anticipated revenues. And I'm sure at the county level, you're seeing a similar rise in your sales tax collections, just like we are at the state. Uh, our income tax has performed, we've been very strong in our income tax as well, even the withholding. Uh, and so the state of the state is very strong. Uh, and we, weren't, we did not have to touch our $2.6 billion rainy day fund um, during last year's coronavirus outbreak. So uh, our finances are in good shape and wanted to bring you up to speed on a couple of uh, treasurer programs that we thought might be of assistance. Uh, to you and the county. The first is, of course, our Star Ohio account. Uh, we maintain this. I'm sure that your county treasurer takes advantage of it, but it allows you to leverage uh, our investment desk. And um, uh, we, we've got a great analysis of commercial paper on, an, on our investment desk. It really does require uh, us to be up to speed on the credit worthiness of the different entities that we invest in, but our team does a great job with that. Um, and uh, I'd encourage you to, and the treasurer, I appreciate you, the, the use of the, uh, of the Star Ohio account. We just want you to know that that's available to you anytime you need it. Um, and uh, it's a great source of short-term liquidity. I think particularly you'll see that that product become more useful as credit spreads widen in the future. Um, right now, credit spreads are so tight that uh, it's difficult to find yield anywhere. Uh, I think everybody's finding that to be the case. The second program I wanted to mention uh, is the, uh, our stable account program. We mention this pretty much everywhere that we go. It's an account that uh, you can use for uh, if, you, if you're an individual who is living with a disability or if you have a son or a daughter or a grandson or granddaughter uh, living with a disability. Uh, we have this fantastic feature in our Medicaid rules that if you have more than $2,000 in your name, we will take away your Medicaid benefits. Uh, obviously, if you're living with a disability, the last thing you want to do is lose your medical benefits. And so the stable accounts are a way for you to be able to go out and earn your own money uh, and be able to save that money and pay for your own expenses um, with the money that you earn and you don't lose your Medicaid benefits, you don't lose your Social Security. So it's a fantastic program. We actually have the largest ABLE account program in the entire United States. Um, and we have more than 22,000 account holders now within our stable account program. We have other local governments and, and, uh, and we'd be happy to help you set this up. We have other local governments that actually offer a direct deposit or a payroll deduct feature um, for their employees as a benefit to employees so that they can directly deduct money from their paycheck and put it directly into uh, the stable account. Why is that important? Because obviously with that $2,000 asset limit, um, if you forget to transfer money from your normal bank account into the stable account and you acquire more than $2,000 of assets in that bank account, then um, Social Security and Medicaid uh, will send you a, a, a nasty letter that uh, says you have too many, too many assets in order to be able to receive benefits. So uh, having that direct payroll deduct eliminates all those transfers and you having to keep track of, of all those details. So uh, some, of, some of the counties and cities in the state have begun to offer that as a benefit to their employees. The third thing I wanted to mention uh, today, well, I guess two more things. Um, uh, third and fourth thing I wanted to mention today, the first, uh, the first of those last two things is, is our uh, Ohio checkbook. 
uh, .gov. We had, uh, you're probably familiar with the Ohio Checkbook Program. Um, when I came into the office, it was costing us quite a bit of money to run the Ohio Checkbook Program. And at the same time, the governor's office had a very similar site to ours. Uh, so I worked with Lieutenant Governor John Husted and, and the governor's administration. And I said, look, it doesn't make any sense why we have these duplicative systems. Plus, this is costing us a lot of money. Is there a way that we could look at some new technologies, in particular a product called Tableau, in order to make this more seamless and easier for everyone? So over the last year, we've, we've worked together. We have a new, it's a brand new product. Uh, again, OhioCheckbook.gov, it's a transparency website. Uh, you can go in and actually see any of the expenses of the state treasurer's office from yesterday. It's real time for us at the state level. And uh, if you haven't taken a look at it lately, I'd encourage you to take a second look. It's a, a very easy to use graphical user interface. I think it's better than what we had before. Um, it has, we used to only have the expenses on there, very difficult for any of your taxpayers to understand what's going on. And in terms of your fiscal picture, if you only have the expenses, you've got to have both the revenues and the expenses on there. So we got the revenues on as well for the state, as well as our local governments. And uh, it's very easy to upload it, very easy to update it. You can you know, take a batch file at the end of the year, upload it, uh, and be done. And we've got a lot of interfaces that are already programmed to make it very, very easy. So. If that's something you want to look into in the future and that, that meets your needs for transparency with taxpayers, we'd love to be of assistance with that. Final thing I wanted to mention today uh, was our Results Ohio program. And we feel very strongly like there needs to be innovation in our programming in the state of Ohio. Uh, we need to do a better job of achieving results for the programs that we already have. And frankly, we want to make sure that we stop wasting taxpayer dollars on programs that don't work. And so this is our Results Ohio uh, financial tool. It essentially allows uh, nonprofits locally to start pilot projects that solve difficult public sector problems. And the government, if those pilot programs achieve success, the government will pay after they've proven to be successful. And um, the reason that this is important is, is, first of all, it allows us to have a data-driven metric to see whether or not a project su uh, achieves success. Secondly, you have the private sector, in other words, private money, that first has to be um, put up up front in order to fund that pilot program. And most people in the private sector are loath to put up a lot of money on a project that they don't think is going to work. So there's an automatic check and balance there in the private sector for that money to be floated for the pilot project. And the third element is that as policymakers, whether it's the, at the county level or at the state level, you can set the metrics that you want to see for success or winning uh, on that pilot project. And then we, the state treasurer's office hires an independent third party evaluator, so there's no funny business. It's not about knowing Marcy or, or knowing Robert, and there's no political element to it. Either the pilot project achieves uh, success based upon the metrics that were set up at the beginning or it doesn't. If it doesn't, the taxpayers don't have to pay for that pilot project, but if it does achieve success, then we're paying for something that has produced results and is a good value for the taxpayers of the state of Ohio and, and, and for Claremont County. So we, uh, we wanted to mention that. It can be, we have three different funds. We have a federal fund that can take federal money. We have a state fund that can take money from the General Assembly, and our final fund is a local fund that could take money from, uh, from a county. So with that, I'll kind of conclude and, and answer any questions that you have. Uh, thanks for allowing me to take a few minutes to speak with you this morning. I really appreciate it. Thank you for coming, but also want to introduce our treasurer, which is Jeannie Zermely this morning. Mm -hmm. She's present with us, and we asked her to come on up and listen in at the same time. I saw her just, I, I walked in and I had my back to her, so my apologies, but it's great to see you. And uh, give me an update on how things are going uh, in the Treasury. And you've received your American Rescue Plan funds? We did. Mm -hmm. part, we get part this year, part next year. Mm -hmm. How much were those? Twenty million. Wow.
it's always a, a little bit of a shock. We knew that the money was coming. Um, and then all of a sudden, one day in the afternoon, it ends up in your bank account. <laughs> we didn't buy anything, board. You, you spoke about revenue being up, obviously, in the state. Many, many counties have, have seen that also as far as tax revenue. Mm -hmm. um, it seemed that the Wayfair decision hit right at the right time there in August of 19, which allowed the state to be able to collect uh, sales tax on Internet purchases. How, how did you see it? Is, is that where you saw most of the revenue come from? Or, or were there other avenues that, that uh, resulted in increased revenues for the state? No, I think that's right. I think that that decision um, definitely had a, 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 you know, an upward impact. But then also it's just everybody staying home mm -hmm. and buying a lot of durable goods during the coronavirus, at least during the initial months of the coronavirus. And then I think you have pancaked on top of that, which probably is creating a lot of the inflationary pressure that we're also seeing. But you have pancaked on top of that the additional federal unemployment, the stimulus dollars that came directly um, out into people's bank accounts. And so all of that you know, additional um, uh, monetary stimulus, um, I think, uh, drove, is, is driving consumption. And uh, that's at least a good portion of this. Of the revenues that we, <clears throat> we saw that didn't really hit the mark were mostly intergovernmental revenues. One was gambling casino revenues. Has that started to, uh, to uh, rectify itself now that they've kind of opened back up? Is that, that what you're seeing? I, I'm not sure about the, the gambling revenues. That's not something that um, I can, I can I, I'm sure I could look at it, but I'm not sure what they're doing right now. I know that they've um, recovered in the last few weeks, but I don't want to uh, give you an expert opinion about that. What I will tell you is from the state level, we received additional kind of stimulus dollars uh, from our FMAP or the match that the federal government gives for our Medicaid expenditures. So, you know, some of those things behind the scenes were, were helping the, the state's budget picture. Um, but I, I, don't, I can't give you an answer as to the casino revenues. Do you have one here? Is that right, a casino? We do, we do not. We do, you okay. We do not. <coughs> we, we contribute just like everyone else. You yeah. know, we receive just like everyone else in the state does. Yeah. Yep. yeah, I think those have largely recovered. You know, our things that we saw were off also were like court fees, those mm -hmm. type of things, obviously. Mm -hmm because of the impact due to the pandemic. And then just one, one last question. You know, there's always a lot of talk about Medicaid expansion and about federal dollars coming into the state. I know that when our governor ran, one of the things he had said was that that was not sustainable. You know, what do you see in the state as far as that and the impacts from that? Any, any opinion or thought? Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, I think the first year that we were supposed to um, pay for the Medicaid expansion, the 10%, the state share for the Medicaid expansion, was either in fiscal year 2021 or 2022. That largely has been, you know, subsidized by several hundred million dollars worth of additional FMAP that I already talked about, uh, the increased FMAP, the increased match from the federal government. Uh, that has kind of, uh, you know, taken away that additional pain, at least for the time being. Uh, it will continue to grow, obviously, the state's obligation of that, and it will continue to crowd out um, other expenses in future state budgets. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Badger? I just want to say thank you for taking time out of your busy day for coming down, giving us the update, and also thanks to our treasurer for the great job she does for the residents of Claremont County. So, nice meeting you today. I, I appreciate you mentioning that to the treasurer. I don't think that uh, they get enough credit. So No, they, yeah, don't. they don't. She keeps Wait. us in line. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it, it, it's tough when you have the best county treasurer in the state. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Would you, uh, would you uh, take a picture with us? Absolutely. That'd be great. Jeannie, come on up. Sure. Absolutely. <laughs> go right up front. All right. Where do we go? Right there in front of the seat. Nice to meet you, Robert. Hey, good to see you. Yeah, thanks. No, <laughs> nice <laughs> try. Robert's great. I roll out of the way. No, oh, you got this. <laughs> okay.
Okay, just waste up for Jeannie's sake. <laughs> I also should have introduced uh, Marcy, Marcy Longnecker. Yeah. You probably already know Marcy, yeah. but if you have any questions, um, she's got a direct she's great. line to everything. Hey, Marcy, how yes. about come up here? We'll take one more. Okay. Okay. Come on, one more. <laughs> come on, Marcy. You're not done. Come on. Come on, Marcy. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else in the family? <laughs> Okay, moving on our agenda this morning, I guess we are now at member comments. Members, are there any comments this morning? None. Hearing none, we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All the roll, please. Commissioner Painter? Yes. Commissioner Batchelor? Yes. Commissioner Corcoran? Yes. We are, we will be back this Wednesday. But there's two things today I'd like to just say for closing that don't forget it's flag day. Get old glory out there. Letter probably. wave, right? Huh? Letter wave. Letter wave, absolutely. Yep. And Commissioner Painter, um, you got an award for the Champions of Hope Award. We'd like to say congratulations to you this morning. Thank, thank you very much. And, you know, really, you know, an award like that isn't about one person. It's about a great team here in Claremont County that has worked tirelessly, you know, when it came to uh, a challenge with substance use disorder here in Claremont County. We all knew where we stood, you know, a few years ago, and that situation has changed. So thanks to, you know, all of the people that work to make that happen. Thank you very much. We will end this morning. We will see you back on Wednesday. Thank you for joining us.